This morning we'll go quickly to God's word and we're going to continue from where we stopped yesterday. Remember this month as it's coming to a close, it's also a time when we are learning about what God is doing that will prepare us for the year ahead. A door has been opened up already. Amen. And through that door, God is going to lead us. And it's up to us to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Teranda vasalai, devan namakku munbaga vaitrikarar enral, nam keer padindi, viswasati nale adar kulaga prevesi kavendu mendra var virumbugara. He wants us to do it. Amen. And when he wants us to do it, we follow with an assurance in our spirits, believing that God will help us to do everything that he wants us to do in our lifetime. Now yesterday when we were here, I was telling you about how God specifically ordained it that when the children of Israel would enter into Canaan, It would be at the most appropriate time in the way he would provide for his people. Amen. In Joshua chapter 3 and verse 15, the Bible tells us, God ordained it for Israel to enter into Canaan at a time when the river Jordan was overflowing its banks. But it was also a time when the fields were ripe for the harvest. They had not planted the crops. And I want you to write down certain things and learn them well. Because this is the way in which God is going to be dealing with his people in the days ahead. God is not going to be talking stories to his people. He is going to show his people what he has done in the past. And what he expects his people to see and obey in the days ahead. This is not a story time. This is not even a religious time when we spend some time with God in prayer. No. This is a time when we receive our instructions about the year ahead. Israel was entering the promised land. It was a time when the river Jordan was overflowing its banks. The barley harvest was on. Why did God take them in at that point of time is the question. He took them in because he wanted them to reap from the fields what they had not sown. He wanted to show them a pattern and to the church also a pattern that we will reap what we haven't sown but what is legally ours because of covenant. I don't know whether you understand the implications of covenant. Covenant doesn't make you a lazy man. Covenant makes you a responsible believer. Covenant makes you walk in line with faith. Changes the man. The man doesn't become an irresponsible man. He becomes more and more and more responsible. He understands why the fields are ready waiting for him. Can I have an amen please? The fields were not waiting for the annex. The fields were not waiting for the Canaanites. The fields were waiting for the Israelites. The covenant meant to come in. And that's why God's opening a door, like he said, right now in this season, it's open in the year 14 for us to enter into so that in 15, you reap 
the blessing. It's going to be a harvest year. But the harvest is going to come because of your faith. The harvest is not going to come because of effort alone. It's going to come because of your faith in God's word. Some people think faith is foolishness. Faith is not foolishness. Faith is not even presumption. Faith is the character of God. You can't fault faith because faith is the character of God. So I want you to write this down please. The the livelihood of the Israelites' enemies were about to become their supply in their newly acquired land. So there was a great transfer of wealth to God's chosen people. Transfer of wealth. Fields of different types of crops started exchanging hands. Now I want you to understand something. Please get this right. They had already they had already plundered Egypt. I want you to write and learn please. Because it's not a story. There's no use in simply telling God you split the Red Sea, you split the Red Sea, you split the Red Sea. I mean Splitting the Red Sea was not the biggest miracle. To us it looks like it's the biggest miracle. It's not the biggest miracle. The biggest miracle already happened earlier. Where a nation was spared when the destroyer came. And it was the blood that saved these people. The blood marked houses. And they came out with silver and gold. There was no one feeble. Now, rich people were going to become richer. It was not poor people becoming rich. I don't know who they are listening. We are so connected with poor will become rich. Poor will become rich. We don't understand rich can become richer. No, you're not. The amen is not coming. It's not poor becoming rich. They were not poor. They had silver and gold. They had plundered Egypt. And remember, they had nothing to spend for 40 years in the wilderness. So the money was with them. The wealth was with them. The silver was with them. The gold was with them. Then you have to know and believe that God is good. Because all this hinges on faith. You can't have a part faith in life. Where one part is faith and another part is the worldly ideas. Worldly thoughts. Hellenistic ideas of how matter is evil. You can't live that way. You can't believe in God's word. You have to believe God's word. ஏற்கனவே இவர்கள் கையிலே பணம் இருந்தது எகிப்தில் இருந்து எடுத்து வந்த அவர்கள் பொக்கிஷம் முழுவதும் அவர்கள் கையில இருந்தது பொக்கிஷத்துக்கு ஒரு குறையும் கிடையாது நாற்பது வருடம் அவர்கள் வனாந்திரத்தில் சுற்றி அரை போனாலும் செலவு செய்யல they are going into fields that are waiting for them to come. That is what is happening now in this season. This season is for you to say, Amen. I want what God says is mine. That's it. That's all what faith is all about. Faith is not your logic. Throw your logic aside. Your logic has got you into a lot of mess already. It's messed up your life. It's screwed up your Entire, you know, financial status. Because it's your logic. Now come back to faith. None of these people were logically coming to any conclusions. They were simply asked to follow God's plan. 
cross the Jordan. Go past the decision. Amen. And enter into the promised land. We read Ezekiel chapter 36, 29 and 30 yesterday. Ezekiel chapter 36, 29 and 30. Talks about how there is going to be a blessing that is going to come your way. A multiplication of the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field. I don't know if they're listening. Personal life, you will find increase in fruit. In the field you are in, it can be any field. Hospitality, business, educational field, travel field. Doesn't matter what field it is. There's going to be an increase of the field. That you shall receive no more reproach of famine. I want you to mark that phrase. You were here last yesterday. You would have heard me. Not here yesterday. I want you to mark it down. Mark it in your Bible. It's good for you to understand that God is a remover of reproaches. Nindaye Edithu Podum Devan Namde Mati Le Rikra Varumayi Ninday Lack Not Having Struggle All that the heathen were laughing at you for is going to be removed. Totally. Can I have an Amen? Ningal inimel jadigal kulle panjati nal undagum nindaye adaya the padike. No more reproach of famine. That's your word. I mean, listen, by the grace of God, 2015, week of prayer will come. Just like you heard about the. Dist- the King going before you to remove all kinds of hindrances, barriers, obstacles. And he did it. He's going to do this as well. Why do you doubt it? If he said it, he'll do it. The fields will bring forth crop. Increase will come. You will have cause to rejoice. You will have cause to testify. Amen. Amen. Now this morning I want to share with you something that God gives us as a promise when you receive words that are prophetic. Matthew's Gospel chapter 10 Verse 41. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10 and verse 41. Thirka Darasi ennum namathin nimithim Thirka Darasi yetru kolgare Kolgraven, Tirka Darisi Ketra Palanai Adaiwan. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10 and verse 41, the Bible says, He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. When you receive a word from a prophet, Who is the prophet? A prophet is a man who speaks forth the things of God. A mouthpiece of God. He is not an astrologer. He is simply a spokesman from God. 
Remember what I told you about the centurion who saved Paul's life. Most people don't even understand that Paul's life would not have gone beyond the ship had the centurion not stepped in and spared Paul's life. Because the purpose of the soldiers was kill everybody. If they jump into the water, they're going to escape. Kill them. But God had positioned a man there who would spare Paul's life. God sends a man to you with a message. When you receive that message, you receive a prophet's reward. There is a blessing that comes your way. And there are three things that you need to see that will come to pass in your life when you receive the prophet's reward. First thing, what you had lost, you will find again. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 31 tells us about the sevenfold return that the devil has to pay back. Amen. Nidhi Marigal Aare Muppati Wondele Yer Madangi Pisas Aram and Thirumum Taravendum. Indeed, Namwe the Tre Vasikram. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. He doesn't give part of the substance, he gives all the substance. So there is going to be restoration in a way in which what you have lost will be found again. When you read 1 Samuel chapter 9, you read of a young man called Saul. And I want you to write it down because this man was ordained for victory. This man was separated by God from the tribe of Benjamin for great things. I don't know whether you're listening, but you are ordained of God to rule and reign in life. Whether he lost it or not, no one can dispute the fact that he was God's first choice as king. I don't know that you're listening, please. So I want you to write down all these things. Before you let somebody else take over because of your disobedience and lack of faith, understand you are God's first choice. Are you listening? He was God's first choice. God wanted him to rule. In every way, he looked dynamic. He was a tall man, well built, taller than all the Israelites. But in the inside of him, God wanted to do something that would make him king material. He was shy. He didn't like prominence. But then the spirit of God came upon him and made him a different man. But in 1 Kings chapter 9, the Bible talks to us about how this young man called Saul We are going to read about him. I'd like you to come with me in your Bibles. Under Samuel, Umbudhaw Dadigar. Ingal Yilanda Dai Mindum Kandu Padika Padum and our Nichia Thoda Ningal Dai Yetu Kalalam and the Vasanatha Yetu Kalalam. Listen, 1 Samuel chapter 9. Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror the son of Bechorah, the son of Aphia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. I don't know who is listening. And he had a son whose name was Saul. What an introduction. Hallelujah. It didn't say he was a man of great valor. His forefathers were known men. 
But all of a sudden you say, you see here the Bible says, and he had a son whose name was Saul. Avanikka Saul enum perule saundriyamana valiben nage or kumarani irundan. A choice young man. I want you to mark in your Bible. This is not a story. Have your pen with you. Whom does God choose? A choice man. You are God's choice. Amen. Can I have an amen? Look at yourself in a new light this morning. You are God's choice. And a, he was a choice young man and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. I heard him listening. If God is selecting you to do the job, you got to believe there's no one better than you. From his shoulders... And upward he was higher than any of the people. Then you can imagine. He had to have little bit only more height to touch Goliath. For David it was a lot. Saul was not a small fellow. He was tall. He was big. From his shoulders upward he was higher than any of the people. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, was lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee and arise and go and seek the asses. He had to go. He had to find asses that were lost. It may sound surprising to you that God chooses somebody By sending them out on the most illogical pursuit. Think about it. Here is a man who is going to become king. Before he arrives at his destiny point. I want you to write and learn these words. That means today God may ask you to do the most mundane work. Don't refuse it. You'll be a fool if you refuse to do what God sends you to do. The most mundane work. But before he arrives at his place of destiny. The place of destiny for Saul was not finding the asses. The place of destiny for Saul was coming in contact with the prophet. Sometimes God sends you on a commission. You are meant to meet a man of God. Meet the man. Meet that servant of God. Meet that prophet. I'm not talking about calling prophets. I'm talking about you going on a mission and in the way you happen to come across someone who has an answer to the solution that you need. So the Bible tells us Saul meets Samuel. என்றால் இவன் தீர்க்க தரிசி ஆகிய சாமு வேலை சந்திக்கும் வேலையில் gone after the asses. If this man had not entered the door that God had opened for him, no doubt in my mind, he would never have met Samuel. 
look please and we are going to continue reading and they passed through mount ephraim and passed through the land of shalisha but they found them not then they passed through the land of shalim and there they were not and he passed through the land of the benjamites but they found them not can you imagine how much of land the man had to cover just trying to find asses i don't know you're listening no you're not listening you're getting distracted this morning please don't get distracted this is your life how long will you go searching and searching and searching and searching and never finding because you never meet the right man who has answers for you how much of lands was covered by this man Saul just for lost donkeys he's going all over the land not here he goes to the next place all over the land not there and when they were come to the land of zup five was five i thought was another party saul said to his servant that was with him come and let us return lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us forget about the asses my dad's going to get worried let's go back how often do we come to quitting point in life how often do we think okay i waited so long let me just go back there is no future any longer my friend it's not the asses that god is sending you after he wants you on the throne Amen. i don't know whether you listen he wants you on the throne you're wasting your time with asses it's not the asses and he said unto him behold now there is in the city a man of god and he is an honorable man so there were dishonorable men also amen, amen. hallelujah all that he saith cometh surely to pass now let us go thither for adventure he can show us our way that we should go then said Saul to his servant behold if we go what shall we bring this man for the bread is spent in our vessels and there is not a present to bring to the man of god what have we and the servant answered Saul again and said Behold I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver I don't know you're listening your seed will transform your situation but remember this seed was always there in their hand nothing happened amen you got it bula it the seed was always there when the seed was in their hand they never found the asses when the seed was in their hand they went from place to place to place to place follow and i want to write it down all their bread had been eaten up all their provision wasted that's how it is in our lives when we don't get the breakthrough all the principle is eaten up and if we don't put a full stop to it immediately we are going to be bankrupt we are going to enter into a debt state already food is over nothing to take the profit what are we going to give the man of god seven says i'm having the fourth part of a shekel can i have an amen of silver that will i give to the man of god to tell us our way 
Amen. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, and come, and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. Then said Saul to his servant, Well said, come, let us go. So they went into the city when the, where the man of God was. And as they went up the hill to the city, they found young maidens going out to draw water and said unto them, Is the seer here? And they answered them and said, He is, behold, before you. Make haste now, for he cometh today to the city. For there is a sacrifice of the people today in the high place. As soon as you be come into the city, you shall straight away find him. Behold, he go up to the high place to eat. For the people will not eat until he come. Because he doth bless the sacrifice. And afterwards they eat that is bidden. Now therefore get you up for about this time you shall find him. And they went up into the city. And when they were come into the city, follow please in your, in your Bible. This is the principle. You get the principle, you get your answer. You get your answer to getting back what you have lost. Amen. Don't sit and be blabbering things and saying, you know, it's lost, it's lost, it's lost. I don't know whether it's going to be found. God knows where it is. You have to have a word from the word of man of God. Follow and behold, Samuel came out against them for to go up to the high place. Now the Lord had told Samuel in, the, in his ear a day before. Saul came saying, Tomorrow about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin. I want you to mark it down. Be honest. Most of you are honest this morning. I say most of you because some are so pious they will not accept it. Did, did Saul really hear from God? He didn't. God didn't tell Saul, Saul get up. Go and meet the prophet. The servant said, There is a man of God. Oftentimes, you're not even expecting a word from God, from a man of God. But in the bigness of God, God is telling the man of God, I am sending you a man. That's why you're here today. Amen. You're here for the week of prayer because God sent you. Amen. God has sent you, not you. I will send you a man tomorrow around this time. Out of the land of Benjamin and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people. That he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people because their cry is come unto me. And when Samuel saw Paul, the Lord said unto him, Behold the man whom I speak to thee of, this is the same that shall reign over my people. You sang one song a couple of minutes ago. What is the song you sang? Some of you came in late. So you didn't sing it. We sang it. I am listening. I am not being sarcastic. I want you to come early for worship. You have to understand God speaks from the time we honor his presence with the first prayer. I will reign on earth. I will reign on earth. God has separated you to reign over his people. That's the word. So Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where's the seer's house? And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up unto the high place where you shall eat with me today and tomorrow. I will let thee go and will tell thee all that is in your heart. And as for your asses that were lost three days ago, 
Amen. God has the answer already. What did you lose? What did you lose? Be honest. What did you lose? Peace of mind. Joy. Money. Property. Wealth. As for what you lost. Whether it's three days ago or three years ago. Or even 30 years ago. Set not your mind on them. Amen. For they are found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on thee and on thy father's house? He's saying forget about the asses. God's going to raise you up to sit with the most highest blessing. Horses will be under your command. Not asses any longer. Some of us are sitting and crying and crying and crying and growing bitter over the things you lost. Forget about what you lost. There are better things for you to rule and reign over in the days ahead. 2015, guaranteed. Guaranteed. That's why I tell you, write it down. You don't need to go and ask them or them what did pastor say. You would have heard me say it. You would have written it down. You would have put a date to it and a time to it. It will be there in your notes. You go over your notes, you will be very surprised. Sometimes when I go over the notes that I have preached earlier, it's shocking. Because everything when I said it, I didn't know it. I didn't know more than what I was saying. But by faith I have seen God answer and God provide and God show. So the first thing is you will get back what you lost or what you lost will be found. Number two, the enemy is about to release what belongs to you. Amen. Amen. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, chapter 20, talks about Baraka. Amen. Second Chronicles, chapter 20, talks about Baraka, the valley of Baraka, the blessing that came. Jehoshaphat. Yerinde. Nalagamum, Yeruva the Adigar Baraka Palata Kele Nadan the Sambo Mange the Paterk. But before we come to the Baraka blessing, I wanted to say something that was said about the prophet in twenty. Second Chronicles twenty twenty. Yeruva the and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Amen. What you have not yet possessed, the enemy is about to release into your hands. I wanted to write down what was not yet possessed, but what belonged to them. Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. All that place had not had come into the hands of Israel. They belonged to Israel, 
but they hadn't come into the hands of Israel. Now the prophet had spoken. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. They don't know they're listening. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at verse 22. I'm asking you. That's why I said. Be honest when you read the Bible. Is this the way battles are really won? And when they began to sing and praise. I don't know if you're listening. There was no sharpening of the swords. There was no artillery fire. Instead of that, there was something completely spiritual being done. When they began to sing and praise. The Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir. Which were come against Judah and they were smitten. Amen. And there were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. Hallelujah. First time you read of an army going out to fight with jewels. Amen. Have you ever heard of jewels? In the army they don't allow you to wear anything. Here they're all come out with precious jewels. All loaded. <laughs> so cock- cocky, so arrogant. They're so sure that Israel cannot defeat them. They never knew when the prophet had spoken, it was God saying. Amen. What is it that you have not it got, but which is yours? The enemy is about To release what belongs to you. But you have not possessed it till now. It's it's about to be released. Amen. And finally. 2 Kings. 2 Kings. Chapter 4. What you didn't even know God had for you will soon be yours. Amen. Second Kings chapter four, verses eight onwards. Eight of the verse number there. Under Raja Kal, Nanga of the Adikaram. Eight of the verse number there. And it fell on a day that Elijah passed to Shunem where there was a great woman and she constrained him to eat bread and so it was that as oft as he passed by he turned in thither to eat bread. First it was hospitality. And she said unto her husband Behold now I perceive that this is a holy man of God which passeth by us Continually. I want you to highlight that phrase. Don't let holiness pass you by continually. Keep it in your home. Invite it into your home. Make it a part of your life. Because your house must be blessed. I mean you can let the blessing go by every day. It's not going to affect you. But this woman was a wise woman. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. That means, we are not going to let the man pass us by. We don't want him just going on. We want him to come and stay. Why? Because he has answers. He's a holy man of God. He's a prophet. 
And it fell on a day that he came thither and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant. Now this is what I want you to note. Please note, sometimes after a long period of waiting, you think again, God's not going to do anything. I have already grown old. Now it's not going to be worth asking for anything. But I'll tell you something. There are times that God will give you something that you didn't even ask for. Amen. Amen. This woman never asked for anything. The prophet is saying, he calls Gehazi his servant. He says, call the Shunammite. We have passed the age of having these type of blessings. But I want you to see here. The Bible says, Gehazi was called, he says, call the Shunammite. And when he called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, there has been careful for us with all care. What is to be done for you? I want you to mark that down and remember the same thing I told you. Every day, God is looking for an opportunity to bless you. When you are careful about the things of God, you have qualified for miracles. You can't come and do something in God's house or for God's people and then disqualify yourself. You become qualified. Now the prophet is asking, what can be done for you? You're so careful about me. Wouldst thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? That means, do you need a government job? No, you're not listening. Do you need something from the government? Because you're taking care of me. I have access to the king. If I speak, you can get things done. I don't know whether you're noticing something here. God sends you the divine connect into your future. He gives you the divine connect into the next realm of blessing. And you didn't even ask for it. And she answered, I dwell among my own people. She said, I'm not requiring all those things. I don't need any recommendation. And he said, what then is to be done for her? Now the prophet, please understand this and get it right. God will never become a debtor to man. You do something for a prophet, you are going to get the reward anyhow. Whether you like it or not. (laughs) Whether you want it or not, it's going to come. Whether you ask for it or not, now he is asking Gehazi. She is not saying anything. She is saying, I don't need anything. He is asking the servant what should be done for her. And Gehazi answered, Verily she hath no child and her husband is old. I want you to write it down. Please. A son was given to her even though she didn't ask for it. Amen. She had no child. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, about the season, according to the time of life, thou shall embrace a son. She didn't ask for it. I don't know, listening. Some days you'll get a miracle that you didn't ask for. How will it be? If you get a miracle which you didn't ask for, then you'll stand and testify in Christ's chapel. I never even asked, God gave. But he's telling you he's going to give. I never asked. 
I never even thought, like Brother Kasmiraj said, I never even thought I'll preach in this church. God will give you miracles that you never even asked for. When you are careful about his servant who has his word to you. That's it. You qualify. So the Bible says, she stood there, she's listening to him. And what did she say? She didn't say, praise the Lord. I don't know, listening, look at verse 16. She said, no, my Lord, the man of God, do not lie unto your handmaid. Don't tell me a lie. Don't bluff to me. I didn't ask for it. Why are you telling me something that I didn't ask for? And the woman conceived. Are you listening? Suddenly, how did the old man become a young man? Are you listening? Why should the Bible say her husband was old? From where did God give the man once again creative powers? I want you to understand something. God's blessings are not foolishly given. These words written in the Bible are not written for fun. They talk to us about our future. We want to know what's going to happen. Things that look dreary, lost, old, will be revived again. And something happened. The woman conceived. There was no fertility treatments available then. I don't listening. I don't know whether listening. I'm talking about this. In the most pious way. This woman didn't go and get some doctor to treat her. This woman just was dependent on the prophet's word. And she conceived. And had bare a son. At that season that Elisha had said unto her. According to the time of life. Amen. Can I have an amen? amen? And then you see how Satan tries to come up against the child and destroy the child's life to make a mockery of God. And we read about this woman's faith when somebody her old husband asked her, is it well with you? She says, yes, always, everything's okay. Because she didn't want two casualties in the house, if you ask me. She didn't want her husband dying also. She said, everything is fine, not a problem. I'll meet with the prophet and deal with him. Because I didn't ask him. And he said, no, he'll have to do something. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you need to have wisdom. To go back to God and say, God, when I didn't ask, you gave. Now Satan is trying to make a mockery of what you gave. Continue to let it live. Amen. Amen. You can't have two casualties on your hand. I have more to speak. But little time only. Some of us are waiting for the Sweet by and by. In the sweet by and by. Someday God will give. Which is the day? We don't know. So from 2007, years have been going back. 8 has come, 9 has come, 10 has come, 11 has come. Someday, someday, someday. God is saying no more. It is going to be now. This someday will not work. Amen. Turn with me please to Isaiah 45. This is the last thing I'd like to share with you for today. And tomorrow morning, God willing, we will meet for Holy Communion service here at 8 o'clock. Do I have my message for tomorrow? Yes. Amen. Amen. That's why you're seeing me smiling. Hallelujah. (laughs) Isaiah chapter 45.
beautiful verse that shows us why we don't need to wait for years together in a type of limbo state. We don't know what's happening. Isaiah 45, 1. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held. To subdue nations before him, and I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Amen. 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 How many believe the gates will not be shut? Amen. He said, I open before you a door, no man will shut it. Amen. Katarage non Abishagam Panine Kora Sikka Munbage Jadi Galai Kir Puduti. Raja Klin, Idai Katigale, Avurkum Badikum, Amanaka Munbaga, Vasilgal, Puta Pada the Rike, Kadavagalai, Teren the Vaikum Badikum, Amane Parthe, Aman Valada Kaye, Puditha Kunde, Amanaki, Sulagra of the Follow. God's going to hold you. He's looking at this man, Cyrus, and he calls him his anointed. Amen. The word anointed is the Hebrew word mashak. Mashak literally means to be painted like a target with a fragrance that attracts the favor of God. Amen. <laughs> to be painted like a target with a fragrance that attracts the favor of God. So every time God sees you, he's attracted to you. Have you seen a bee going after honey? What attracts the bee is the smell of honey. Amen. What attracts you in the mind of God is the anointing. You are painted with it. It's a fragrance that attracts the favor of God. Amen. Amen. So the Hebrew word is mashak, M-A-S-H-A-C-H, mashak. Abhishegam panna, pannina koresiki, enna the vaathe parayam, abhishegam enral, hebrew vaathe, mashak enna the vaathe. Now, God called Cyrus a pagan king, anointed because God was going to use him to bring his people back to their own land. Amen. Nearly 150 years before he was even born, God called him anointed. A pagan king. He was not a born again king. He was not even an Israelite king. He was a pagan king. An unbeliever. With God called an unbeliever anointed. Now I want you to write it down and learn it because God's saying he's kept an open door before you. God's anointed you or painted you with a fragrance that attracts the favor of God for a purpose. To walk through those open doors. Your harvest is already waiting for you on the other side of those doors. It may be covered up. Look at verses 2 and 3. I will go before you. I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. That's already the breaker has gone before us. Cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. Amen. What is yours may be covered up. But the light of this word is about to reveal those treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places to you. This year, coming year, what you never saw, you will see. For his glory. Because if he doesn't do it now, when is he going to do it? Christ is going to come soon. God's going to fulfill his word. Amen. So there is coming a time this year when the reapers, please write this down, this is prophetic. 
the reapers are going to overtake the sowers. That means faster than you can get your seed sown, you will be seeing the abundant results of your sowing. Again, I am repeating so you can write it down. Faster than you can get your seed sown, you are going to see the abundant results of your sowing. It's so close. Remember, like I told you earlier, Israel didn't sow the seed. They only went in to do the harvesting. That's how 2015 is going to be. Amen. That's what the anointing is about. This is my last Two sentences and I'm going to close. Hallelujah. It's the perpetual propulsion of energy, of the energy of God, which will propel you through every line of opposition the world has to offer. That's what the opposition will do. It will propel you through every line of opposition. You will overcome. You will have victory. You will be the one who will see the blessing. Amen. Amen. Fulfillment and satisfaction are awaiting you as you walk through God's open door. Amen. Psalm 91. With long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Amen. Praise God. I am glad I was able to Bring forth God's word to you for the week of prayer. Amen. Amen. I've always believed if I start a teaching, I must finish it. Hallelujah. And I believe God will make use of the word that has been preached for these last five days. To open up to you what he is about to do. Will he do it a hundred percent? Yes. Spend some time learning about Jacob, please. Don't forget Jacob was the pivotal starting point of these teachings. Amen. Take your copy of the newsletter for the month of January. Read it. Reread it. Get it from here into your spirit. And understand a lot of good things that are going to happen will start off at Bethel. Hallelujah. Bethel will open up to you the prospects of Bethlehem. Amen. You can't look at Bethlehem without Bethel. Amen. Amen. So get it into your heart of the connection that God has kept, the divine connection. And in the last days we will be hearing a lot from the life of Jacob as well. Amen. Amen. And how we will see the church and the sons of Jacob in operation. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer, please.